Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the select board meeting of Tuesday, December 3rd. Uh, we're here at Memorial Town Hall. I'll call the meeting to order. It's 530. Um, does anybody have anything for announcements? Diana? I do. I have a couple of things. Um, uh, the gala is officially sold out. Did I announce that at the last uh, time? You I did. couldn't remember. Okay, so it is still officially sold out. Okay. Um, and we are selling the uh, candles or the sponsorships of the candles on the cake. Um, if you've had a chance to look at the cake, the candles have gone on. Um, and so if you would like one of those to light, um, either in your name or your family's name, or you can um, you know, make a donation in someone else's name, uh, it's $25 per candle. It's a really nice, inexpensive way for um, you know, your, your family or your loved ones to be part of the um, Hatfield 350th celebration. So those are available here in the treasurer's office at yes. the town hall. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some at my house. Anna Holhut has some. Lori Banis has some. Bobby Betzold has some. Uh, and the, they're for sale at different events that are going to be around town, which brings me to my next announcement, which is next Thursday, December 12th at 7 p.m. is the winter concert at Smith Academy, which is always really a great uh, great concert, a nice way to catch a little um, holiday spirit, and we, the candles will be available um, at the, there. So it's $25 per candle. That's it. Okay, great. Thank and you. And in the next couple weeks, Smith Academy basketball games start. So if yeah. you're interested in that, you can probably look online for the schedule and come down and support the boys and girls basketball team. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Ed, did you I have anything? I just want to mention last week I mentioned <coughs> Secretary of Agriculture. It's actually Commissioner of Agriculture, and it's the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, MDAR. So I just want to clarify that. And I know Brian now will discuss the MDAR. Well, it's a very nice segue. <laughs> so, so along those lines, thank you, Ed. Um, so the, we, we have an announcement that's a little bit old at this point, but it was an announcement made by the uh, baker Polito administration, and, and they declared November 29th as Green Friday. Um, and it was a declaration made to recognize Massachusetts Christmas tree farms and nurseries. Uh, along those lines, um, Ed, Diana, and myself, all unknowing, really, that the others were going to be there, we all had the um, benefit of being at Chestnut Mountain Christmas Tree Farm on Friday and listening to or hearing the, um, the announcement of the in Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary, as well as the Commissioner, John LeBeau, um, read the proclamation that Hatfield was, in fact, the Chestnut Mountain Christmas Tree Farm was the first official Christmas tree uh, in the state of Massachusetts. So I know Ed had announced that at our last meeting that it was upcoming. Um, we had actually had the good fortune of being there and hearing all about the farm and meeting the Secretary and the Commissioner. Um, and there was also uh, in the press release that Marlene just had from, their, from the commissioner's office, there's a picture and it includes um, Bob Schrader, the commissioner and the secretary. And I was just kind of kidding with my colleagues saying, <laughs> I remember that the three of us were in this picture too. So somehow the state had a way of um, <laughs> photoshopping the three of us out of the picture. But uh, I, maybe they had one without us. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, it, it was a great day, and congratulations to well, the Well, and Christmas we appreciate Farm. the hospitality of Chestnut Mountain Farm. Yes. Because they brought us in a horse-drawn wagon all around the property and explained how they plant and, and how they're good stewards of the land uh, in addition to, you know, growing the right. trees and everything. It was really it, fascinating. It, and yeah, we yeah, got to watch the first Christmas tree be cut. Yep, so absolutely. It yep, it was Very great. Nice. Um, nice honor. It, very nice honor. Yeah. The last thing that I have for under announcements is just a reminder that uh, Luminarium is in fact, uh, once again, we've been saying this every other meeting or so, on Saturday, December 21st. So I just wanted to make sure we remind everybody that it's on Saturday this year rather than on Sunday. Okay, nothing else? Marlene, no. did you have anything? We're good. All right. Uh, public forum, is there anybody here for public forum? I don't see anybody. Um, we do have one set of minutes to approve, if you're so inclined, from November 21st. I'll make a motion. We accept the November 21st minutes as presented. There's a motion made. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, under our posted business, uh, we do have some guests here tonight. 
Um, we're going to hear from um, Community Choice Power Supply Program in, um, is it Dinergy or Dinergy? It is Dynergy. Okay. Dynergy Energy Service Supplier. So uh, Mark and Denise are here. Um, this has to do with uh, some changes, potential changes to your Eversource electric bill and the rates. Um, and Mark and Denise are kind enough to sort of give us an overview and explain exactly what will be happening over the next few months and what residents and businesses need to do. Um, to either partake or not partake in this program. So I've turned the floor over to, to them if they don't mind. So Mark Cabot, owner of Five Mount Royal Lab, um, Marlboro, Mass. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for having us tonight. We're here to talk about um, what would be your electricity bill and the supply portion of your electricity bill. So from a, from a, a consumer standpoint, Eversource is still going to be your electricity company. But the town has gone out and procured energy. They're bringing you a choice that you haven't had in years past. So there's a going to be a choice that you're going to, to receive. I want to take one step back and just say, there's been a long process. So I'm going to just explain the process that we've been through. So the, the town went through a process at past town meeting and after town meeting, uh, they approved a plan. And then after the plan was approved, we went on to the state. And the state approved the plan that was done and they issued an order. But for two years, the market wasn't in, in a position that we liked compared to basic service that we've seen. And later this, earlier this summer, late summer, we did find a market that was very advantageous. The town took advantage of that. They signed a contract with a supplier called Dynergy for a 30 month contract. And the rate that's going to be there is going to be 9897. So the town's program is set for the next 30 months that will allow you to have this stable rate of 9897. What does that mean to you? So to the end user, that means nothing more than, hey, I have the ability to take this um, a program by the city, I don't need, by the town, I don't need to do anything. Where every single person that's on basic service will receive this mailing. The mailing will come and it will show you, um, Eversource has announced their winter rates. We don't know them for the summertime. But their winter rate this, this coming winter is going to be 11571. That starts January 1. The town's program starts with the February meter reads. So everyone will see that first rate in uh, January on their February bills. We use power first and then we pay for it. We will be sending out a mailing um, in February. We're, excuse me. We're in, targeting December 12th for the mailing to go out. And then there's a 30 day opt out period. Um, it'll come with an opt out card and it'll explain the program, give the rates, and if, you, if you'd like to opt out of the program, not be part of the program, you need to sign and return that card that comes in the mailing. And the, the program will start, like you said, with the February meter rates. Correct, so in the next week or so, there'll be a piece of mail that's going to come to you. Now, if you're on competitive supply, you won't receive this mailing, but that doesn't mean you can't join the program. You can always go on our website, call our 1-800 number, and we can enroll you in the program. I repeat, it is truly a choice that, that the town has brought you, meaning if you decide to join the program, that doesn't mean that you have to stay in it for the full 30 months. If for some reason um, in the summertime it, it, you wanted to do some other program, you could leave the program and go do that and then come back to it in the wintertime, or, or you could stay in it the whole time, or you can opt out of it. It's, it. The supplier is taking that risk. If everyone opted out and one person wanted to stay in, they'd still be afforded that rate. So that rate Dynergy will offer customers for the next 30 months uh, not here in Hatfield. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's going to be the rate. Um, what does it require? What does it mean to the end user? I think is the, the main thing people are going to ask. So from a, a, an end user standpoint, nothing is going to change. It, meaning, if the power goes out, you're going to call Eversource. If a problem with your bill, you're going to call Eversource. Um, if there's an issue at, with your meter, you're going to call Eversource. This is truly just talking about the electron running through the wire and you know, call it the commodity piece of it, and you've been able to procure it for 30 months at a, a very attractive rate. All of that being said, if I, if, I was, um, if I had a farm discount, you'll still receive that farm discount, and you just get this rate. It, it, none of that, a budget bill, still receive a budget bill. Um, a, a low income discount or a farm rate, all of those uh, benefits are distribution company um, benefits, and you'll con continue to receive those. Um, if you have solar panels, 
anytime that you're using power, you would just be paying this rate rather than the, the basic service rate. If you own the panels, it's a little bit different, but if you're renting the panels, normally it's a financial transaction with the utility and they'll just be paying you your whatever the basic service rate is for the usage. So it could be a win-win. So I'm gonna use actual numbers. If you were using power right now in the winter time, you'd be paying that nine seven, but if you were generating excess power, the utility would be paying you the 11571. They always pay utility rates. So, that they're, so they're neutral in the marketplace. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any other issues that, that might um, be withstanding. Um, I know that we're going to try to set up a meeting at some point here in the future. I'm gonna call it an informational meeting. So once people get that mailing, that they can come down and Denise and I will be here again and we can answer any questions anyone might have. So if somebody sees this, we're gonna put in, uh, something in the newspaper mm -hmm. and they have questions, we're just going to try to find a time that works for best for everyone. If we need to have more than one, we're happy to come back during the day or at night, what have you, so that we can answer any questions anyone might have. And later this week, we'll send you over some FAQs and some social media postings or just for the website mm -hmm. with some basic information, contact information, Colonial's website, the supplier's number to call, um, where people can go for more resources if they have more questions. But certainly, they can contact us. But we'll give you some FAQs so people can find it easily on the town's website or in town hall. Why would someone opt out? <laughs> so if for some reason, some, there's lots of uh, people have aversion to, uh, some people feel like it's an over um, step by the, by the government. Like, uh, why are they doing that? From my standpoint, as it is right now, the government says you get Eversource. Uh, I think it's a little misguided, but that's some of it. And believe it or not, some people think that they need to sign that to enroll. So they're actually opting out by mistake. I just want you to know if you opt out and you, and you didn't want to, you can always join this program. The program is set up kind of just the opposite of the um, supplier print plans. There are no, I repeat, there's no small print. You can opt in and opt out from, as a residential anytime you'd like. So there's no, there's no fees or penalties to do any of that. So it, it's truly just a choice that hasn't been there in the past. Whether or not the, the <laughs> whether or not the customer decides to, to, to enroll, that's up to them. But truly their choice that hasn't been there in the past. What's on the, on the, do you have any figures on the, like sort of the average electric bill, what the savings is? Because it's clearly a lower rate. So just guaranteed savings for February, March, April, May, and, and June. Uh, around, if you were going to, the Department of Public Utilities says use 600 kilowatts. If you're the average customer, you'd save around uh, so be, uh, $10 a month, $10.04 a month. That's what you would be saving. Okay. But you don't need to do anything to get that savings. Okay. Right. I, I don't know what the summer rate will be. Right, I understood. I understand. That. Right, I, I think, to, thank you very much for the explanation, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and also for providing the, the information for the frequently asked questions, anything else that might come up. Um, and and I, I think the important thing you mentioned, um, Mark, was, was so the, this rate is guaranteed, this rate of 9897.9897 is, um, is guaranteed for the next 30 months. Right now, uh, Eversource as of January 1st will be at 11.5, 11.571. Yeah. Uh, so, and there's, Eversource rate can change every six months. And I think Mark alluded to it that there's, um, you know, we don't know what the summer might have in store for us, uh, for, for anybody, for rate payers. But uh, this is sort of a, gear, you know, you, you, you know what you're getting right up front. So, I mean, you know, to your point of opting in and out, you almost can shop a little bit uh, as, as, you know, come spring and see if it's advantageous are, or are not. Are you notified you know? when those rates change? So, the summer rates, we could have a different balance, right? And do you notify rate payers? So there is no notification other than we normally will send the rates to Marlene just right. saying these are the rates that are, are been posted like we did this time here. Here it is so that it, the town's informed. On our website, you can always click on a link directly right there, which doesn't necessarily help people that aren't on the internet. You can go to our Colonial Power Group click on Hatfield and click on basic service rates and another click gets you to the latest rates right now. Okay. But there is nothing that notifies the department's thinking about, which I think would be an excellent idea. Currently, they, they're not, 
the utilities don't put on their bill what their rate would be if you're on competitive supply. But I think it would be a wonderful tool so that people could look at their bill and say, oh, I'm this I don't, I'm not real worried. You guys have really a very aggressive rate, but I'm okay. saying to you, some people pay 22 cents a kilowatt hour and they're looking at the basic service rate at 10 cents and go, wait, why am I doing this? Right. It would be a very good tool. Sure, absolutely. But it hasn't been implemented yet, but they're thinking about it as a tool to uh, uh, protect the consumer. I was going to say, I'm surprised right, right. the public you, utility doesn't. If you can opt in and out, that, you would only actually. do that based on rates and rate changes. Exactly. So there has to be a way to know that, and, <laughs> right? And, and, that's, and very few people. I'm not. The one time I look at the bill, I don't, I, I have know, children now, I look at the bill, I've, it's I've, a dollar I've, value, right? I'm like, oh, what do the kids do here? Honestly, you know? yeah, right. okay. <laughs> but other than that, I don't look, and right. mostly it's a usage issue at my house. Somebody flipped right. the AC on and like, whoa. Right. So right. Uh, unless that happens, I, I don't really see it. Right. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, did you have any other questions for no. Mark and Denise? No. no I, I think it's answer? important to note that after everybody gets their letter, you're going to do a follow-up meeting so that if anybody still has questions, then they can come back and, and ask you guys. Correct. We're, we're going to try to get some dates, Marley. It will set it up over the next, the, the, mm -hmm. the mailing will be open probably like the next 10 days and maybe the following week after that, right the week before Christmas, we'll try to get out if, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. And again, if anyone has any questions at any time, they can always call Colonial. We'll pick it up. That's all we do is answer muni ag questions, but I just feel like it's easier in, in person with people yeah. if they're unsure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank great. you. Great. Thank you. Also, thank you. Have a great evening. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank you for the information. Um, our next topic of business is regarding the um, financial director position, which is financial director slash accountant position. Yes. Um, and discuss um, moving forward with what our options are. Right. So, is you know, um, Mr. Kuzminski has decided not to accept the, the town's offer. And um, I wanted to have, some, have a discussion with the board. Uh, I would recommend that we consider outsourcing Absolutely. the accounting services. Yep. Um, it's the board's yeah. decision whether, you know, until June 30th and, and maybe between January and June, we, open you know, another open another search. Um, there are some options, you know, available to us. Um, there's regional services um, by, you know, a couple of, yep. of organizations in the area. Right. And so I can, you know, set up uh, an appointment with both organizations, meet with the financial staff, or if the board wishes to meet with them. Okay. So I, uh, to, to follow up on that, Marlene, thank you for the update. Um, the, the board had, in fact, uh, along with the finance committee, um, decided on a candidate. We made an offer, uh, thought that there was a lot of interest, but you know things change, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the offer was not accepted. Um, we didn't even get to negotiation f um, phase, and uh, I would agree with you, Marlene. It's the first week of December. Um, mm -hmm. You know we've got to do something. So uh, at least on the short term, I would agree. Let's let's get let's move forward mm -hmm. on reaching out to an established uh, accounting firm, municipal accounting firm, or organization, business, what you know, whatever, mm -hmm. um, so that we can hit the ground running over the next few weeks, hopefully. And then uh, after we get through the first of the year, I would I would suggest maybe we can regroup and see what we want to do. Um, on a go-forward basis, but I, I think short-term, we've worked way too hard um, to, you know, to, it's too late in the game to, to repost, uh, in my opinion, for, yeah. for a single, and you know, a person to come mm -hmm. in. So we need to move forward. We need to keep the ball rolling in the right direction. And so if you would reach out to uh, your contacts and, I will and, and let's that. see what we have for options. See, I don't have a problem with that. Even I don't have a problem if you have the same committee that was uh, interviewing is the committee that gets together and picks sure. which, okay. which for, from my viewpoint, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you need whatever's the easiest. Everybody, yep, yep. I, how, how whatever anybody wants to do. Yeah, I'm fine with. I mean, we don't have a choice. <laughs> no, really. we so we got to get the rolling. only way we can mm -hmm. proceed given the deadlines that we're yep. facing. Okay. Um, with um, Berkshire, uh, Bay State, excuse me, yep. Bay State Municipal. Okay. Um, 
So I'm fine with that. And I think, you know, opening the search in and doing it in a way that doesn't feel like such a tight deadline yeah. and giving ourselves some time mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. um, you know, have that search open a little bit longer might yield, um, you know, some candidates so that we have some choices. Mm -hmm. yep. And so. Plus we were warned there's not a lot of municipal accountants out there. I right. mean, they're, right. they're in yep. demand yep. In, in the state. So. Yep. And I know Hadley just picked up a, a company, and, and other towns have to now pick mm -hmm. up companies that Bay State had. Yeah, so, so we're all, yeah. you know, we're all in the same boat. Wasn't there something so that um, Justin yeah. said about the time of year that they will consider moving was like spring, yeah, like like early spring? When he was here, right. you know, late, late fall and then early spring. Yeah, so maybe that will, I think right after maybe town meetings or something. Or maybe far enough before, before. them that there's, yeah. I think that's that's a good a good way to move. Do you, you don't need a motion two, to do that. No. Okay. no. Okay. Thank you, Marlene. You're welcome. Uh, so to, you. so to Ed's point, um, what we had done was we had a member of the select board, uh, two of the five members of the finance committee, um, the, a member from the treasurer's office, and Marlene, and that that's who did the interview of, of the couple of candidates. So I think that's, that's a good group. Okay. And, and then um, we brought all the information forward to, mm -hmm. to the various full boards to, to move forward at that point. Okay. So as long as you guys mm -hmm. are okay with that. I mean, that. I'm in agreement with that. I okay. I, I'm a, in agreement with that. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good old finance. <laughs> <sighs> I know. Uh, all right. Um, our Marlene, under the town administrator report, we've got uh, some notes regarding the fire chief extension. Yes. Um, uh, contract extension. So you, I have prepared uh, an employment contract amendment for the fire chief. As you know, he mm -hmm. is going to resign his position and has agreed to, to stay on until the end of January. And his original contract expired November 30th. Okay. Um, so I have uh, prepared an amendment, Make reviewed it, it with town council, and we just asked the board to vote to approve that amendment and then sign it later. And the amendment really is, is just the, ex it's is just merely the, the date, extension yeah. for two more months, it basically. Is. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I'll make a motion that we um, grant this am amended contract um, for um, extending the contract of Stevie Gone, Chief Gone, excuse me. All right, I'll so, second uh, till January 31st, January 2020. 30th. Okay, so a motion's made and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank we you. We thank Steve for yes, thank you, being Steve. willing to do that. Yep. Um, Mark, we so um, we have some information regarding um, the audit management letter that we receive every year from our auditors, and um, we usually get a, a draft of that, a, a preliminary copy. And, and am I using the right terminology, Marlon? You know, we receive that from them. We we received uh, a, a draft, a draft, and, and then a, a final, the final, actually. and then we we respond and we to, respond to uh, that. any questions or um, information that they're looking for that think would be beneficial to the town on a go forward basis. So. Yeah, we just you know if so <coughs> we, we we develop a plan or a course of action, course of action. and. Um, you know, reviewing the management letter, um, a number of, of sightings actually are applicable to policies we already have in place, our financial policies. Uh, so the financial team, including the treasure collector and, and Justin Cole and I, um, developed this response that you have in mm -hmm. your packet. Um, and, and what we're responding to are the material weaknesses that are pointed out in the right. management letter and the recommendations. Um, so we can go through that if you'd like. I don't know if you've had a chance to, to review. Well, we look. I looked through it. I'm, I'm I, sure I my colleagues did as well. I, I mean, I okay. think just so the people at home understand that, um, you know, some some of what they they consider repeated findings, mm -hmm. um, we had already addressed. Or, or we, we were in the process we were, of addressing. Right, some of them were already in the process but, but of. The overlapping of being, this management letter comes at the time we're putting in audit, those new, yeah, that's right. you know, putting in the new processes. So, so in response to that auditor's letter, 
that's exactly what we're putting in. That's what our responses say. So, for example, grant awards not in possession of the town accountant repeated from a prior year. Our response is the grant management is referenced in the town of Hatfield financial policy on page 34. You, you know, so we, we've already taken past um, uh, information that we've received or, or improvements that were requested and um, put a policy or a process in place to, mm -hmm. to cut down or to alleviate those altogether. Um, I mean, I, I really, it's, it, it's a lot of, I mean, the good news is it, it's the majority of what's on here has already been addressed or was in the midst right. of being addressed. It's, it's nothing new, really, Earth I guess. For, yeah. Um, you know, and part of that was, was ironing out some past financial issues that the town had. And, and mm -hmm. it, it's been a time-consuming process, and I'm not making excuses for those of you at home or for our board, but it's a reality that it, it was time-consuming. And it brings us back to our earlier topic, which is why we need to hit the ground running and find somebody to come in and continue with the accounting right. services um, mm. over the next, at least the next few months mm -hmm. um, till we dust settles, we get through the first of the year and, and see how we want to move forward. So sure. are you looking for a, um, a, a, do we actually, we have to send this out? Do we actually have I, to? If the board finds this acceptable, I will sign the letter and forward it to Mr. Rose Roselli. I think it's acceptable. I do too. Thank you very Thank much you, for Marlene. putting it okay. together, you Thank and the rest you. of the members of the financial team. So do you want a, um, an actual vote for that? That, that will you, be do you just like, fine. Do you like those votes that we take? <laughs> um, just to acknowledge that yeah. you, you have reviewed it and um, to go ahead and it, send it out. Yes. Okay. Is that worrying? Do you want me to make the motion? Well, I'll make a motion that we have reviewed it and what we see is acceptable as far as our response. Okay. So the motion's made and seconded um, to to send um, the auditor uh, the note that we uh, received and have responded to. Mm -hmm. um, any sort of um, questions they had, and Marlene's going to go ahead and send that letter out. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Nice job, Marlene. That yes, thank you, Marlene. Clear and concise responses to everybody so, yeah, who, who to you and, and, worked and, and on the this whole and financial and team. So, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we're looking for a contract with the. Um, well, we had a contract in the past with, with the Hampshire Council Hampshire government. Hampshire Council on government. Right. For, for chapter discounted 90 for chapter ninety discounted the, rates on certain materials and materials supplies. Materials and, and supplies. Um, and when the Hampshire Council governments dissolved, yes. the Franklin Regional Council governments picked up the purchasing yep. program. Right. And what I am asking the board to do uh, is accept this agreement for the chapter ninety procurement services. Mm -hmm. Phil and Phil Genovese, DPW director and, and lead highway um, here at Barry and I met with representatives from Franklin Regional Council mm -hmm. Governments about a week and a half ago. And um, so we're so I do want to to know and, and for the record that <clears throat> they they being Franklin Regional Council Governments does have a, a fee to participate mm -hmm. in the program. And in the past, with the Hampshire Council of Governments, the, the vendor paid that fee, but actually, and then built it back into right. their, you know, they, they got it back. Yeah. Here, the, the town will be invoiced um, for that fee beginning in fiscal year 2021. Mm -hmm. That amount for Hatfield will be $2,750. That's the flat fee? Correct. And for the year. So we'll have so to then budget what is this for 45 that. Right here. The forty five nine hundred and eighty fifty. Yeah. That is the see the twenty down at the bottom. So that's what we'll be doing in in services. The admin fee. They break out the admin fee cost. So that's four thousand eighty three. The H cog sub fee. This is from HCOG? Uh, 1.4. No, the sheet you're looking at was provided by the Franklin Regional Council. Right, but it shows the HCOG admin fee going down the middle. Oh, it does show HCOG. HCOG fee, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 
So in other words, if I, if I read this correctly, we're going to be so we're saving, saving about two, money. Correct. I'm sorry. So this is showing what we pay. In addition to what we're to saving by using the bids. That's right. right. That, okay. uh, that's and that's right. the important. Point, that's the really Diana. important part yeah, right. because the not only the the time and the uh, you know uh, there's legal review involved yeah, and right. all kinds of contractual stuff, crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. So being able yeah. to take part in these bids is mm -hmm. money in the bank. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. The diagram at the bottom of that page, it's, it's you know, a population multiplier, okay. how yep. they calculate that. So this is how <clears throat> Franklin Regional calculates it. Yes. As a sort of flat fee, but the Hampshire Council had done it based on usage. Usage. Okay. Correct. Yep. Well, that's a win-win. So you need a motion? To accept the agreement and uh, participate sign by signing the agreement. I will make a motion that we... Um, Participate in the um, FERCOG Chapter 90 bids, highway bids um, for FY, is it for FY21? Yes. As presented. I, I'll second that motion. I just want to say Absolutely, that go ahead. people have to realize this is a pretty good deal when you, when you think that each of the items would have to be individually negotiated with separate mm -hmm. contracts. You'd have to have like 20 contracts to get each of these items. Here they're already a lump sum. So what? even though you're paying a fee, you're saving on the administrative costs of, of putting all that together. In and then there's the aggregate right. buying power of right. all the um, right. you know, all the municipalities yep. that are taking part in it. And so you yep. really end up jockeying for a better price on all of right. everything. Yep. So. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ed, for pointing that out, Diana. So the motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. All right. Uh, our HR policy review, section 23. Um, so we're revisiting this again. Yes. Um, yep. So we didn't have it in our packet at the previous meeting, and I had reported that. Um, you know, there are a few surrounding communities that do require their drivers to, to participate mm -hmm. in the random drug and alcohol testing or it's just their, their CDL drivers. And I, I, did, I dropped the ball and didn't follow up as quickly as I should have, but you I... You didn't drop the ball. This <laughs> spoke fine. with the COA director and the yep. school superintendent. Um, one thing I, I neglected to point out is our HR policy uh, is applicable to all town employees, excluding the school department. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about this policy, we had yep. said it would include the van drivers because those are town vehicles. Right. And then, of course, our COA uh, van drivers. Um, so I, I think we so might want to include our school van drivers. The HR policy is not applicable to the okay. school department employees. However, when I talked with, with John Robert, he, he said that he certainly would be willing to discuss it with the school committee and that they you know, could yeah. consider. I mean, I would hope they would consider sure. <laughs> right. Um, right. something this So important. I have sent what you have in your packet. Um, and I, I added at the very top, number one, any employee that operates a town-owned or leased vehicle shall be subject to random alcohol and drug testing. I would also recommend that we, we go back to our town, use of town vehicle policy, which we have already visited and reviewed that and insert language in there. Um, but I have forwarded this to town council to review. Okay, okay. so it hasn't been reviewed yet? Yeah, okay. I have not received a review. We should probably that's wait that's until that's we hear back. That's what I was going to And then I, the, other, the other thing I'm curious about is if we adopt this policy, we now have to put in some type of protocol for actually doing the testing. And there's there's an expense there. That's right. Yes. Um, I, I haven't done that yet either. And, so, you know, because I, if we, if we, I mean, we really should do this. I'm not saying it's something that should be happening constantly, um, but. I was going to talk to the company that, um, that the town uses for the DPW employees right. and see if they might be able yeah, to provide that Yeah, maybe get an service. estimate of what it might be. Because we'll have to budget and, for and that. And maybe what's, what's a reasonable amount of random tests to be mm. issuing based on our employee, the size of our employee pool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't think we want to go overboard with it, but we want to make sure that it's, we're 
um, that we have safe drivers. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. absolutely. Okay. And yes, I would agree. Okay, so we're just so that's just another piece of this that. As a, a little bit of yes. research okay. on that. Okay, wait till thank the you, Marlene. Yep. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, town hall um, renovations update. Ed, did you want to take that or? Well, we have Marlene, right or? here. We have a change order to put the ramp on the back. So, yep. included with the document in front of you, this AIA document G seven hundred one dash. 2017. Uh, the change orders to put the ramp and the West End ingress, West End. and the price will be 95879.16, so $95,879.16. That'll be the total. Right. As you'll notice on this contract, it, it'll show what the original contract was and it adds the, it all together. The, previous the last change, change order. order. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But we did talk about the 95 out of the 325, so. Right, and, and we did talk about this entire right. process at our last mm -hmm. meeting, and we talked, exactly. um, so we knew this was coming. This is just the official Board approval previously to vote on it, I'm that. guessing. Right, right. we right. approved moving forward. This is to approve the monies tonight. Right, that's correct. And, and have me sign up. And there were three sort. options. Yep. The board yep. approved option two. This is option you're good. two. You're so good. I'll make the motion to approve the uh, PCO number six for the West End egress changes at $95,879.16. <laughs> and that will be to put the ramp in the back. Okay, there's a motion I'll made. Second that. Motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Mm -hmm. All right, Ed, thank you for um, taking the lead on on that and, and attending these meetings. Yes, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any unanticipated new business? Nothing from me. Ed, any unanticipated, yeah. unanticipated new business? No, and I will make a motion to adjourn. All those, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, John. Perfect. Thank you, John. you guys did good, thank you.